thank you. So I just have a couple of questions. I want to know, I guess, number one, like your original reaction to when you auditioned for Clerks in 1994, when you read the screenplay initially. Um, what was your thoughts on the material and the, uh, the subject matter and the character? Okay, so, well, when I auditioned, I actually didn't know what exactly I would be auditioning for. Um, we were just told that uh, a kid, and this is how it was quoted to me, a kid would be uh, holding auditions at the First Avenue Playhouse where I had actually done some shows. Um, it was after that audition that Kevin called me up, had me come down to the convenience store. I picked up the script. He said, read it, let me know what you think, and let me know. So I read it while I was at work, so just sitting around one day. I worked in a salon, and uh, I was laughing. So I was like, I'm in. <laughs> the way you deliver his dialogue is, is excellent in the, in the first film. Not many actors and actresses can deliver that much verbose dialogue at a time. Thank so, you. Uh, and yeah. my second question to, to follow up that is, when you got the Clerks 3 screenplay, how did he approach you with that, uh, with that concept, and what was your reaction to that screenplay? Uh, well, one thing, it's like he, <laughs> I got a text from someone. Now, I never had his phone number, so it's like, but I got a text. He's like, hey, Marilyn, this is Kevin. And I'm like, I think I know what's Kevin, but I'm like, so I texted him back. And I'm like, I know a few Kevins. So, okay, is this like, you know, can you verify which Kevin? And he's like, Smith. And I'm like, okay, I thought so. Um, and so he sent me this script. So I was excited for that alone. And I don't remember if it was like the same night I, that I read it or if it was maybe the next day or something like that. And I told them, I laughed, I cried, I hysterically laughed, I hysterically cried. And we're- It's true, it's true, it's true. You can see, as, as a professional actor, I do acting in Rhode Island as well, as well as uh, filmmaking. You can see in that clerk who are the trained actors and who the, are, are just, you know, they're not so trained, but still perfect for the roles, because people just fit into the roles. Uh -huh. So, I always wanted to ask one more question, your fo the follow-up is, does Dante, I know you can't spell too much, but if you had a pick, because now Dante has a few love interests, uh, excluding the donkey, <laughs> <laughs> um, can you give us any hints as to where your relationships go in the future, and a little bit of tea for Clerks 3, uh, and the release of like, when it, when, when, you know when it's coming out? Um, so we have been told, and I'll just say tentatively because anything can change, June. That's all I can tell you. Okay, that's all you can <laughs> and as far as like the other stuff, I can't, I and can't. Do you know if there's anything in the works for another thing after Clerks 3 that you might be involved um, with? Um, as far as with Kevin? Yeah. Uh, or like a possible fourth Anything you're series? working on personally or with Kevin? Oh, okay. Either, so, either I mean, yeah. yeah, nothing, nothing with Kevin. Um, and... I mean, you know, COVID's kind of put a hit on a lot of things. Um, personally, I have um, film, TV projects. Honestly, I, I don't know where it falls on the, on the spectrum there. But I did something about, I think it was five years ago, in Al Albuquerque, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And it's based upon a true story in the 1800s period piece of this nun who was very significant um, and is the daughter of immigrants, and I play her mother. Uh, and I had to audition in Italian. I don't know Italian. Uh, <laughs> but you learn how to say certain things really quick. Um, and so I was contacted that they're going to be doing some pickup shots in December, and uh, they wanted to know my availability. And basically, what they did is they got the approval of the Vatican to make her the saint of immigrants, um, the, the nun, and her name is Sister Blandina, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, where can we keep a lookout for that? Like when? It, I don't know where that will be. You know the title of the film? Uh, so the end of the Santa Fe Trail is what it's called. Um, but yeah, you follow me on social media, you know, I, I keep everybody abreast as to what's happening in my life. <laughs> Excellent, man. Thank you so much. We appreciate the interview. Thank you so much. Can you say something in Italian? Not really. Okay. <laughs> not, not, a, not, you know, it's, it's like. Can, can you say, uh, can you say uh, 37 or, uh, I don't know. No, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's like, the thing is, it's like I learned the line and that's about it. 
Yeah. How to pull it off. Thank you so much. Have a great Rhode Island Comic Con with Brian O'Halloran. Yeah. You um, can take the mask off if you wish. Thank you. So I just wanted to get, um, I, I asked my own the same questions. First, your reaction on the 1994 screenplay when you first auditioned for Clerks, when you first read it, and got an idea of the character. What was your initial reaction? Well, uh, I didn't get to read the script to audition. We just did uh, our own monologues for auditioning. Uh, then Kevin called me in for a callback, and the, seg the scene that he picked for me to do a reading again for the callback was the uh, independent contractor scene of Star Wars. Okay. Didn't know what the script was about, could have been auditioning for porn for all I knew, you know, yep. although porn is not as well written it's as this. Out, 2022. Yeah, and so um, when I then finally got the script and got to read it, I thought it was hilarious. I remember I was living in a house with a bunch of roommates uh, off campus in Rutgers University up in New Brunswick, and I would come down. This is during the time when the NBA Finals were going on and the Knicks were in the, were in the playoffs, rather. And I would come down to say, oh, yo, yo, go. Yeah, you got to listen to this line. They're like, shut up, man. Ewan's at the foul line. I'm like, he's going to miss. Listen to this joke. And so uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, the ending, the original ending where Dante, uh, spoiler alert, yeah. gets shot, um, I didn't like from that very beginning. And I even said that. But he's like, no, no. And Kevin explained uh, the, you know, how he wants to have a serious ending due to the fact that he has, has to have some sort of meaning to this. So. Well, I think that changing the ending to what it is now is a good idea because at that time, a lot of those independent movies had the main character die, so that was like par for the course with independent films. So you guys kind of broke that norm. Right. Um, now, what, just a question, like um, going into it, like working with your co-stars, um, like the relationship with, with um, Jeff Anderson, the relationship right. with Marilyn, um, how was, how was uh, working with them? Well, I had worked with Marilyn Gigliotti before. We had done a play before. As a matter of fact, the monologue I did for my audition was from a play called Wait Until Dark, which I played opposite her in that. Uh, as far as Jeff was, when we, you know, I didn't meet him until we started rehearsing, which we rehearsed uh, a month before shooting at night. After Kevin was done with the, the, his shift at the quick stop, we'd go over to the video store and go through different scenes and, and, and reading different scenes and stuff. Uh, the chemistry was really weird because we immediately took to each other incredibly well. We bounced off, especially the rhythm of how Kevin likes his dialogue read, I think went really well for both of us. And it's been like that ever since. There's been years of gaps where we don't get in touch with each other and Kevin brings us in for let's say well, the cartoon series or Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back these different appearances of Ke of uh, Dante and Randall pick it right up yeah. as a matter of fact this past August when we were filming we got into rehearsals first and then started filming Clerks 3 it was like getting on a, no, another bicycle again that we were fine just a little oil on the chain and we're back to running it at, at full speed again which is enjoyable and uh, I really look forward to seeing what the fans will think when the movie comes out, I've been told that's as of this airing, uh, June is the uh, alleged release date of Clerks 3. I'd love to, can't wait to see what the fans think. Your question, follow up, following up the original question, what was your reaction to the Clerks 3 screenplay for the first time? Oh. Uh, How much did you know going in before Kevin, like, before you agreed to come back? Well, or? Kevin had a, a first draft of a Clerks 3 script about four years ago, or five years ago that we read that uh, Jeff was uh, not con fully convinced to be a part of. And so that script, we then read years later at the for a charity event for a fundraiser for the First Avenue Playhouse. Uh, it was a ticketed event, two nights of reading this screenplay with different people playing different roles. Marilyn Gigliotti came back, uh, Diana Devlin, and a few others came in to read the script. And so uh, it went really well, and uh, it was a very darker kind of script. So when approaching it again, and after Kevin had his heart attack, um, he approached uh, this, the new cut or the new draft of this script with a different angle on it. Uh, Kevin's talked about this on social media before about, you know, the script is loosely based that Randall has a heart attack and decides, oh my God, I haven't done anything with my life. All I am is an owner of a convenience store. I, I should be, you know, I'm always watching films. Why can't I just make a film? Yeah. And it, it's so funny and cute that he makes a de facto version of Clerks of a film. So. That being said, it was really weird. It was like a time machine that you're in this kind of time loop of an alternate universe. And it's funny because, you know, the Loki uh, show came out with these variant yeah, timelines and right, stuff. And right, I'm like, this right. is kind of like a variant in a weird way. But in general, I think the fan base who love the original, especially, 
are going to just absolutely embrace this new one. And last question for tonight. Um, sure. Any, what's the, what, what does the future hold for your characters potentially in the Kevin Smith VSU universe? And then what do you have coming up? Anything that you want to uh, plug, promote of your own personal uh, work coming up? Sure. Uh, as far as the future after the Clerks 3 uh, script, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the reaction is by the fan base reaction. And then as far as what I have coming up, I have a few projects that are in the works. There's, there's things that came out during the pandemic that were released. One, uh, a great film called Right Before Your Eyes about a man struggling with alcoholism. Uh, and then and his friends getting him out of that. And then another one is a, a, a film uh, uh, that Jay, that Jay, yeah, right, right, right. I seen this Jay did this uh, uh, yeah. Madness in the Method. Uh, that This is Jay's uh, Jay rectorial debut. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And tons of people, including Kevin and Vinnie Jones. And, and that's still available on Amazon. That's still available on Amazon. I mean, I, here at the cons, I sell to the DVD copies and stuff and the Blu-rays. Um, but that's another one. And then there's two other films I'm in talks with to work out for. 2023 and 2024. Great. Well, Brian, it was great catching up with you. Good to and see you as well. So thank uh, you so much. For the future. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, that? You've been to Rhode Island a few times now. Yes. What do you, what do you like about Providence? Well, being uh, coming, I've, I've been coming to the Rhode Island Comic Con for many years now. I think this is my sixth time here. And the thing about it, A, the organization is really great to work with. You know, the alternate entertainment people are always really great to work with. Steve. And his uh, staff are awesome, but also the, the the city of Providence in general. It's such a it's such a wonderful city. You know, you can go to Fox Point and get some really great you know restaurants out there and, and arts and artisan kind of stores to find individual kind of things. But downtown is really great to do to do things. And this facility, this facility is really a, a great facility to have a show of this size to be a part of. The Omni Hotel that's connected directly to this has been very wonderful uh, in housing all of us uh, annoying celebrities. Um, but the people turn out, man. All of New England turns out, especially for this show. But we get people from Maryland and the Carolinas and people out from Chicago I met this weekend and stuff like that. So, you know, the, 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 the history and the reputation of the show has traveled beyond just the Providence area, which is great to see. And, it's good to be back after such a long pause. I mean, we are in the business of mass gatherings. So this business got hit hard, especially those independent artists that are down on the um, exhibition floor and these individual vendors who that's how they make their living. Uh, I felt bad. Yes, you can sell things online, but it's not this community. You know, you don't get to cosplay and get to enjoy things like that. And that's the kind of thing as I turned her, yeah. So it's that type of thing. And as a, as a fan of other guests as well, that's why I love coming out as well. You're welcome. Thank you, man. Good morning. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Man? All right. How's it going, man? Good. So my first question is, what's with the gum? What's we started? You? Yeah, yeah, we're starting. So welcome to Rhode Island Comic Con. This is Jeff Anderson of Clerks fame and Clerks 2 and Clerks 3. Maybe i got to turn my hat around so they know that who works. I am. That works. I think the laugh works. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my question is, um, is there ever a time when you're not chewing gum? I'm always chewing gum. And, and you know, it started in the movie. I would chew gum because I was scared about the dialogue. And if I chew gum, I found that it gives me an extra second to come up with the line. It was completely done for nerves. So if you watch Clerks 1, I chew gum the whole time right, right. because it slowed me down from talking. It would help me if I forgot a line. I could. There's my tip to all you actors out there that aren't very good like me. Chew gum. That's actually genius. That was a joke question, but that's, that's, that's really smart. I mean, so it's like, memorable. When we shot two, I think I had gum most of the time. And in three, I said, I'm not going to chew gum. And I'll tell you why. Because, like, in all my pictures and all my stuff, my mouth is always funny because I'm chewing gum. Yeah, so, yeah. like, when they, the publicity department <laughs> sends me the pictures, then, you know, they send you the pictures and say, are you okay with this? All of them, my mouth is all, because I'm always chomping on gum. For me, that's, like, that's your character. I mean, it makes another dimension to your character. Which is great. That's exactly what it was. I was thinking <laughs> about the character. <laughs> so my first question is, what was your a reaction to the Clerks 1 screenplay from 1994? I know you weren't really in This is your you third or this, I know. question. You know how we do. First question. Unless you didn't like the answers to the other ones, you're no, just going to edit and start here. That was chit-chat. Now we're getting it. <laughs> This was, that was chit chat. So, a re reaction to the original screenplay, how Kevin kind of roped you into it? Because I know, I don't know if you auditioned for it. Yeah, no. Um, I, I, Kevin and I went to high school together. We had a lot of the same friends, although Kevin and I didn't really hang out together. We had a lot of the same friends. And I, one of my friends was actually supposed to play Dante. And he was originally, he would, yeah, Ernie. He was originally written in for that. 
So I think I was at Ernie's house or somebody's house, a party, and the script was there and I was kind of thumbing through it. I was like, holy shit, there's a lot of bad words in here. Who put this together? And he was like, Kevin Smith. I'm like, he's fucked up. <laughs> so I went to the auditions with my friend Ernie just to kind of watch the whole thing. And I wound up just making fun of him. I was like, you can't act, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, let's see you audition. I was like, give me that script. I'll get up there. And I asked Kevin, I'm like, who should I audition as? And he said, well, I wrote this part for Jay, but I'm not sure Jay will be able to pull it off. So I auditioned for Jay. Wow. Would that have not been a different movie? Yeah, yeah that would. Jay that... chomping on gum all day, <laughs> like, what's my fucking line? <laughs> and then so, so then you, you, went into, you went back to Clerks 2. Was that an easy sell to bring you back for a Clerks 2 or a hard sell? Because I'm... <laughs> It took 12 years, but I think, to do Clerks 2. And I think he started talking to me about it eight years before that, before I committed to doing it, yeah. I was like, man, my jaw's gonna hurt. There's a lot of lines in there. That's a lot of gum I'm gonna have to chew. So how different was the Clerks 3 screenplay when you initially read it to where it is now? I, I feel like you elevated the, the course of the movie. There was, there was another draft of Clerks 3 that existed before this. And I think it's safe to say now, because I know I've heard Kevin come out and say it, that it didn't sort of feel right for Clerks. He, he wrote it at kind of a weird time. He said he was in a dark place, and it was a dark movie. And he's working, give us any insights into the script? Because I know he read some of the pages from it. Yeah, I don't want to do that, because I, 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 I don't know what he's done. I, I pay very little attention to this. I do not want to piss him off and say anything that shouldn't be said, because maybe down the road it's going to be a comic book or something. There's always talk about doing that. So, and, and truth be told, I don't remember a whole lot of it. Yeah, but <laughs> now you have a much bigger role for Clerks 3, and it's kind of like a personal story. Is it personal for you? Did you do anything different to get into the mindset of Randall visiting the character in kind of a different light? <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole process for me to get into the, no. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's again, it's always nerve wracking. I get scared coming up to these things, like especially this one, Clerks 3. Randall is a chatty motherfucker. And I'm like, why does he have to have so much dialogue? But uh, we get through it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and your, your relationship with, with uh, Brian O'Halloran is great. Can you just say a quick word or two about like working with your scene partners, um, Brian, yeah. and, um, and I don't know who else you work with. But so I guess how you work with Brian, what do you, you know? Yeah, it's um, uh, after we shot Clerks 3, um, I, I kind of figured Kevin's never going to ask me to do another one of these, so we're going to call it good here. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I, I, I wrote Brian a nice card, and I, I, I really meant a lot of the things I said. I probably wouldn't have done the movies without Brian, because as not being an actor, I was uncomfortable and nervous about doing it. And I know, you know, Brian and Marilyn, these, these guys had all done theater and stuff, so it was intimidating. But Brian is such an easygoing, nice guy to work with, and we just kind of have good chemistry. And uh, without him, I, I wouldn't have done anything other than Clerks. I, I think it's great that you don't have the acting experience, because you, you, you kind of come in and because you, you, your character comments on everything, you know, mm. it's kind of the running like it's like it's like mystery science theater, yeah. and you're like this movie, this is that, and, and it's kind of like a you know a meta thing um, with that. So right. uh, I guess I do want to say like, what, what do you consider like a, a normal job? Is that too, is that not too, as long as that's not too personal? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I had a business. I owned a business until 2019, and. Uh, since then, I've been hanging out chewing gum, and I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to get sponsored by gum. Um, <laughs> Chulies gum? Yeah, so <laughs> Chulies hurts your jaw. We, we actually had Chulies in number three, and somebody gave me that. Like, I was like, all right, I'm ready for a piece of gum. It was a scene I didn't know my dialogue. <laughs> I'm like, oh, give me that gum now. And uh, the, the Chulies is very hard on your jaw. I, I, they need to work on that. They need to work on that, uh, get that recipe done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rhode Island, Rhode Island's fun. I actually, um, I've only been in the Clerks movies, but I, uh, I was on my way to London one time and I stopped in New Jersey and this guy sent me a script uh, called Finding London and he wanted me to be in it. And I was like, how random is that? I happen to be in New Jersey. I'm on my way to London uh, and it was a local guy and I came out here to Providence and we shot this uh, little tiny film, yeah, just for... You know, I haven't even seen it. He showed, oddly enough, he made a second movie and he showed me that, but I haven't seen the one I'm in, so maybe I got cut. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been here in Rhode Island before. I love it. It's, it's a nice little town. Yeah, I live in California. I live about an hour outside of L.A. But it's, it's weird, though, like when you do an event like this, you kind of come in and go out and you don't get to see a lot of the town. 
but I've been here before. Brown is beautiful. I think it's a beautiful town. Federal Hill, if you're looking for a good Italian. Federal Hill. Somebody told us that. Yeah. I think the yeah. driver from the car told us that yeah, if you're looking for a good place. That's my plug. There you go. There you go. Well, Italian food is East yeah. Coast. You don't do that on the West Coast, so I like to get Italian food yeah, when I'm here. Right on, right on. Uh, uh, Jeff, it was great to talk to you. Thank you, sir. And uh, get your insights and everything. And uh, thank you, sir. For Clerks Marine, I'm looking forward to it. And I think you're, you know, I think I really think you elevate the whole. Everything else is great, but I think. The I heard you say the same thing to Brian, man. <laughs> you you got to come up with some new Brian, lines. Brian, <laughs> you know, <laughs> All, right, All right, folks. Clerks Three, June 2022. Don't throw rocks at me after. <laughs> right, thank, thank you, you guys. You too. Have a great. I know you love Rhode Island. I know you've been here a lot. Yeah. Um, well, uh, just tell me a little about, I guess, the experience on Incubus. How you first started working in the state of Rhode Yeah, I mean, with uh, Verdi Productions. Chad Verdi, a uh, friend of mine, along with, um, gosh, a bunch of people, obviously, with William Forsythe and uh, uh, Freddy Krueger himself, you know, Robert England. Uh, worked with another guy, writer Glenn Siano was his name. Uh, he's still around here. Local people, yeah. actually. Rhode Island local people here. So we, uh, yeah, I actually got approached about doing this film. Talked to my boy Glenn about it, because actually I did another film prior to where he was a writer on it. Yeah, exactly. You can see he knows. That's what I was about to say. It's Tommy Simone. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, you know, he said, I'd love to be a lead guy in this thing. I'm like, I'm not lead material at all. I don't know what you're talking about. But again, working with these people and those those guys were freaking it was freaking awesome. So that was your first and second um, opportunity yeah, in Rhode Island. Yeah, I did our Army of the Damned as well. Yep. Yep. All right, and you love to be back. And uh, I, what, what's next for you? What, what are you working on right now? Right now, I'm hosting a game show network uh, on a game show network called Common Knowledge. Uh, weekdays at 5:30. Shameless plug. <laughs> but also, um, been doing a show. It's almost kind of like a Rat Pack idea. It's called the After Party. And what the After Party is is it's myself, Wanya Morris from Boys to Men, and Nick Carter. And a lot of times, what we'll do is we'll bring in other people. So we did one in Vegas. Now we're doing another show coming up next week for that. So it's awesome. been great. Sounds good. We'll have to watch for it appreciate and appreciate it. it. And have a great time in Rhode Island. Thank, Thank you so much. Man. Thanks, Joey. Crimson here with Motif All Right here with James Murray. How are you doing today, sir? Great. How are you, buddy? Not you too bad. Cooler than I ever have in my whole life, by uh, the way. But you're a lot more handsomer than well, me. Well, you know. By so much. <laughs> so with like everything with Impractical Jokers, yeah. and then we also had the pandemic come on. So tell me about like, yeah. you know, working around like the pandemic con uh, constriction about Impractical Jokers. Was there like any difficulties you had? Yeah, we had to change the show. We had to film further away from people, but we found creative ways to do it. And uh, I th we shot a whole season even during the pandemic. There you go. Oh, excellent. So tell me about some of the books you got out right now. Right? I got five books out. They're awesome. They're exciting, action-packed thrillers and horrors. The latest one is called The Stowaway. It's a mystery th thriller about a serial killer on a cruise ship, which is a freaking great idea. Uh, and Don't Move is fantastic, too. It's it's being made into a movie, which is awesome. Really? And I got three more books coming out next year called Area 51 Interns. Uh, and then another one coming out the year after that. It's moving on up for you. Where can we find your books? Uh, go to, uh, you know, uh, uh, go to, uh, you know, anywhere books are sold. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, you'll find them. Airports, you'll find them in trash bins all across America. Fireplaces as ash. Whatever you need it for. Toilet paper. <laughs> That's how we roll here. Thank you, James, for joining us. I appreciate it. Cosplay. Craziness. We're all again. <laughs> We're changing the costume up. And we changed it in, the, in a matter of a year between the man and the chat, we changed the costume six times. So. I personally love it. I mean, yeah. like, again. The roller, the roller girl look. The roller derby look. No, not just that one, but they have multiple outfits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, she's a superhero outfit with a power girl. And, uh, but the roller derby was part of our story. Yeah, hold on. Enjoy the roller derby. One sec here. And, uh, they took that into the movies. You know, they, uh, Margot took that literal and, uh, Fun. It's kind of fun to influence. No, this no, the style is a lot more fun because I mean, as a girl, it's kind of nice. Like she can be sexualized, but not overly sexualized. You know yeah, what I mean? like, the old costume was skin tight, and you know, and she put on all this makeup and stuff. We wanted it, and it had neck ruffles. And Amanda hates neck no, ruffles. No, no, no. She had the first <laughs> costume was like the pajamas. Yeah, the pajamas, which is really, really cute. But the reason I don't want to do it is because my favorite thing to do is facial expressions. I'm also excited to see the hair too. Now I can see the hair all the time. When she finishes that drawing, maybe a minute or two. What's that? I said, when she finishes that drawing, you said, though, you can go behind the table. Maybe I'll listen. I know, I know. Sorry. 
Okay. 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 <laughs> you want to do an intro? Okay. Oh, okay. No, I just no, I have to like change channels. So. So, hi, I'm Jade like the stone. <laughs> stone. I'm Amanda like, you know, the I don't know. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you guys. Well, I'm such a dork, right? I didn't realize it was you until like you pointed out. I'm like, I love that comic style. Oh, like yeah, that re envision of her. I'm like, it's bomb. Yeah. You have a great interpretation of her. And I'm like, I guess my question for you is like, now that she's like really big now, thanks to you, realistically. Well, for, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the it's combo. Us and Chad and, and John and, and sure. yeah. Our crew. Our crew, yeah. yeah your crew's really we, brought we, her. we can't do it without, without our crew. Our crew <laughs> is like, helps us so much. You guys are so, so awesome. But uh, yeah, I guess my question is, um, um, where do you think it's gonna go from here? What do you feel like? How do you feel about it? Like, I don't know. Um, uh, it's gonna make I, us rich. <laughs> <laughs> not really. No. No. Uh, I mean, they're, they'll probably do more movies. I imagine they can't possibly not do more Harley movies. I think people will probably want that. I think I think the next move for Margot should be to do a solo movie and not have to put 40 other characters in it and. You could name a movie Harley Quinn, and I think it'd do pretty good. I think it'd be it, it worked yeah. out pretty well for the yeah. Joker movie, so I think getting the right people on a Harley yeah. movie would be actually pretty the way to yeah. go. What did you guys think of the Suicide Squad? Her interpretation in, in oh, that it was movie? Fun. Yeah. She was great. It was so much fun. I mean, I, that both whole movies. Movie was... yeah, the new one was crazy <laughs> and fun, and there's a lot cut out of it. Really? And if you look, I'd yeah, there's a lot the of Harley stuff cut. cut out of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's she just I mean the, we've met her a couple of times. We've talked to her and she's super nice. She's super she's nice. Great. She asked us what we thought of her interpretation, which we thought it was great. Um, but she's great. I mean, you know, the best thing one of us should do is sign her up for another three movies and get her working because I don't think anyone could be as committed as she is with that. Yeah. Role. She is Harley. She's a powerhouse. Uh, Martha Rock is a powerhouse because she just doesn't like slow down. I'm looking at him like. Where well, she's in a Barbie movie, movie next. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Between Barbie, yeah. First books Amanda Drew. So yeah, there's a, the, Amanda Connor and Margot Robbie have this thing where they. <laughs> was that a DC works on. book? No, no, that was, that was for... Mar Marvel had licensed it from Mattel. Mattel, yeah. Okay, wow. So, uh, nice. so yeah, it was, cool. that was like back in the nineties. Yeah, so yeah. Whatever Amanda does, eventually Margot Robbie will do. So I think the, the, the <laughs> lesson there is follow what Amanda's doing. That's awesome. All right. Hi, I'm Jade Like the Stone, and I'm with David Harris, co-chiefs from the Warriors. If you can count suckers! I'm actually really excited about this. I actually really, really like this movie. I'm glad you do. Did you? Oh, I got a million questions. <laughs> so when you first, like, went for this movie, did you ever think it'd be this big of a deal? No, we never thought. I mean, we were supposed to shoot for nine weeks. We ended up going six months. There are four different versions of this movie. Wait, what? Really? Four different versions. Nine weeks turning into six months. Walter shot four different versions of this movie. The stuff in this movie that you've never seen. That's on the ground at Paramount. Ooh, could we ever get that, you think? I don't know, man. You guys would have to deal with Paramount Pictures. <laughs> they own it. <laughs> you know? So tell me, why was there four different versions? That's really interesting. Because when we were shooting, Walter was so brilliant. And this, he kept sending the dailies back to California, to Paramount. We shot in New York. Oh. And they kept saying, oh, my God, this is so brilliant. This is so brilliant. Keep going. Keep going. And they kept giving him money. And he kept shooting and shooting and shooting. And it was just magnificent. So that's what happened. Are you happy with the final cut? I, yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, I would love to have seen everything that was not in the movie because we shot some brilliant stuff. But, you know, you can't have a four-hour movie. That's you got to cut it down to an hour and 40 minutes from four hours. So you have to edit, and a lot of stuff hits the edit room floor. So, but, you know, we still have a great movie. Oh, that's, yeah, we came out amazing. I love that Thank movie you. so much. Thank you. Um, do you think they're ever going to reboot it? Never. <laughs> Never. That's a good Never. answer. Never. <laughs> if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. I mean, there's certain films that you don't touch, and Warriors is one of them. Leave it alone. 
that's actually a really good answer. I agree <laughs> with that. There's also a game. Did you ever end up playing it? Uh, well, we did the Rockstar, did the video game. Yeah, yeah. Okay? They always and made they, the best. they used our voices. We came in and we shot, I mean, we recorded the voices from the Warriors. And I think Rockstar did a magnificent job with it. You know what I mean? I, I loved it. You played and it? I, loved, I played it. <laughs> it took me forever <laughs> because it is long. And I personally think cold cheese is the best thing in the video game. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so awesome. You're delightful. <laughs> Thank you. So are you. Oh, I did. And I love your outfit. Oh, I did. It looks fabulous. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask for him? I know. Right? Okay, there's so one thing awesome. I just want to say to all the fans. <laughs> Can you dig it? Well, thank you. Okay, hi. I'm Jade Like the Stone from The Motif, and I'm here with Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil 8. <laughs> and I just happen to be her daughter right now, Daniela. So is this your first time being at uh, Comic-Con? No, I think this is like my second or third time, but it's been a while since, you know, COVID. <laughs> So what's it like being back out here and, you know? It's crazy, honestly. It was, it's a lot of fun so far. I've only been here, you know, 20 minutes since it started, but it's definitely, I miss being here. Do you think the crowd's going to come back along with you? I, yeah, I think so. I definitely think so. And aside from me and you, has anyone else recognized our costumes? Um, I've got like maybe two or three people that have said something, so. Nice. For those of you that don't know, we're from Resident Evil Village. But thank you so much for interviewing with us. Thank you for interviewing <laughs> me. You look awesome. Thank you. You do too. Your mom? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my mom. <laughs> yeah, it is. Sorry. Yeah, this is just what I wear every day. There you go. Yeah. It's like, wait, it's like, wait, really? I'm thinking of the show. Like wearing the same. Somebody's best on Wednesday. Yeah. 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 Well, it's made out of paper. Yeah. 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 What so, are you guys doing here at Comic Con? Yeah. We're interviewing you. Oh. You gotta get it closer to his, because he's got a mask on. He's my folks. Oh, yeah. No problem, knock it over. No, <laughs> We're breaking things already. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, can I help you? I'm uh, busy reading here. Well, hello there, sir. I would like to do an interview. Well, that would yeah. be fascinating. What can I help yeah. you? I'd like to know uh, what this con is all about. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Chasing unfiltered. And uh, it's a graphic novel that he's about. Dr. Joe Chasen, who's a nephrologist and a local philanthropist who is supported and uh, in many ways a local artist and art institution. So in the book, it's, uh, it covers his life as a doctor, his personal life, and uh, some crazy, wild embellishments on his life story that are totally surreal. I'm not going to say made up, but really turned into a wild spectacle. 